last little video, we're going to talk about uh, limits that fail to exist. So not, unfortunately, not every uh, limit we can calculate. So here's some examples of uh, limits that fail to exist. The common types of behavior associated with non-existence of limits. Uh, number one, of course, f of x approaches a different number from the right side of c than it approaches from the left side of c. So in these two uh, previous examples, as you can see, uh, that we talked about, our function approached the same thing from both sides. So it approached 2 from this side and it approached 2 from that side. And then in the other example, hopefully I have it in here somewhere. I need to move this down a little bit. That did not work at all. Uh, as you can see, it approached 3 from this side and 3 from that side. So that was great because it allows us to calculate the limit, but it doesn't always work that way. So uh, that's our number one example of something that does not represent a limit. It has to approach the same number. Number two, an increase or decrease without bound as x approaches c. Now that, that could be that both sides go to um, uh, something that is unbounded, or it could mean that just one side goes to something that's uh, without bound. And then number three, an oscillation between two fixed values as x approaches c. So we're going to look at a couple examples. Let me scoot this down a little bit. Not sure that'll work for me, but we'll see. All right. So uh, there are more interesting functions that have unusual behavior, but here are a couple examples. So for number one, as you can see, we're looking down here. Uh, and as you can see, it approaches different sides. So if this is x equal to 1, the limit of our function as x approaches 1, and that negative sign, you remember what that means? It means we're approaching from the left side or from numbers that are smaller than that. So therefore, we're going to approach from this way. So as you can see, the x's are getting closer and closer to that value of 1 from the left. And you can see all of our y values are the same since we have a nice little constant function. So therefore, this limit would be 2. So uh, however, if you approach from the other side, the limit uh, of our function as x approaches 1 and that little positive exponent means we're approaching from the right. So as you can see, as we go from this direction, we're getting closer and closer, we hit a value of negative 1. Now, as you can see, those two things are not in agreement. So even though the one-sided limits exist, the, the two-sided limit does not. So therefore, because they're not the same, uh, the limit does not exist at x is equal to 1. For example, too, it says our function increases or decreases without bound. So here's would be an example, a nice little rational function for us, 1 over x squared. Uh, if you look, as, as we get closer and closer to 0, uh, the left side is going to approach positive infinity. The right side also approaches positive infinity. Even though they both approach positive infinity, uh, the limit does not exist because it, it, goes, uh, it increases without bound. And then last, uh, an oscillating function. If you were to graph the sine of 1 over x, and I probably should have had this all ready for you on the calculator, but uh, we'll see if we can't type it in real quick. It's going to be a little bit hard to see until we zoom in, but that's okay. Uh, the sine of 1 divided by x. And when you graph it, oh, let me zoom in. If you ever need to interrupt it, you can just hit that. I don't want to zoom. Standard 6. So it's going to be a little bit hard to tell. Uh, looks nice and pretty for us, but uh, when we zoom in a little bit, you are going to be able to see that our function is going to oscillate. And what that means, uh, you can barely see it, but the function kind of goes like this. You know the sine function uh, is a wave function, so it goes up and down, up and down. Well, it's going to do that a bunch right here. So we can't really predict that it's going to a specific number. So therefore, the limit does not exist on that example also. Here's another example. Uh, this time we're doing it numerically as opposed to the graphic examples we had a second ago. So as you can see, the limit of the absolute value of x over x as x approaches 0 does not exist. And here's why numerically, as you get closer and closer to 0, you're going to end up with negative 1. Uh, when you approach from the left side, and then as you approach from the right side, you're going to get positive 1. So because these two values are not equal to each other, therefore the limit does not exist, and feel free to put D and E or write out does not exist.